Make sure you follow me on social media to get updates and ask me questions. Enjoy the video. In order to use the API that we are going to build with Laravel, we need to send to the API a token that makes sure the user is authenticated. This is what we are going to do in this video, to generate tokens for the users whenever we press login through the Vue.js application that we have. Then we will store the token in our local storage and whenever we make an HTTP call, we send the token along with our data. To make this possible, Laravel 5.3 offers Passport. Passport is a new feature in Laravel and we are going to install and configure it right now. First, I will create a database that we are going to use with Laravel. I will name this database View Laravel and I will go to my PHP Storm in order to complete the .env file. So the database will be View Laravel. The username is root and the password, there is no password. After I do all this, then I can go to my terminal and run php artisan serve. So still in the Laravel project, I want to populate our database with some users so we can log in later. So we already have a migration to create users, so it is right here. And of course, we also have a model factory to create as many users as we want. And of course, in case you forgot what these are about, then take a moment to watch the Laravel series and come back here again. So all I have to do is to go to my database seeder and use the model factory. So factory, user, class, and I will create 10 users. Now I will open a new tab on my terminal and I will run php artisan migrate and then dash dash seed. So this will migrate the tables and it will seed 10 users. So let's take a look now. If I go back to this, you see that we have the new tables and of course inside the users table, we have 10 users and all of them, they have the same password, secret. Now let's install Passport. So still in the terminal, I will run composer require Passport. Once the installation of the package is done, then the next step is to add the service provider. So I will open my app.php file. I will scroll down a bit and right here I will add the service provider. Now I will run again PHP artisan migrate because we added a service provider and this service provider will now has some additional migration. So once I run PHP artisan migrate, as you can see now, it migrates again a couple of other tables. Let's take a look. So if I go to my database and I go to view Laravel, here are the tables. So then we can also run PHP artisan passport install. This will create the encryption keys needed to generate secure access tokens. So in addition, it will also create personal access and password grant clients, which will be used to generate access tokens. So if we go back now and we reload, you can now see that we inside the auth clients, we have two new rows and inside the auth personal access clients, we have one row. And of course you can also take a look at them and also for the of personal access clients. Now to explain what is the purpose of all these, I think it will be boring. So in my opinion, it would be much better and more interesting and fun if we learn what the purpose of this is while we are using them. So for now, it really doesn't matter what they do. You will learn as we continue with the course. So we still have a couple of other steps left. So let's continue. So we want to make sure that the user model knows about all these things that we are doing. So I will add in the user model the has API token straight. So I will open my user class and I will include has API token straight. And you can see it here. So this will provide a few helper methods to your model, which allow you to inspect the authenticated users token and scopes. So we also have to use it here, has API tokens, comma, and of course the notifiable. 
Now the next step is to go to the auth service provider and register the routes to issue access tokens and revoke access tokens clients and personal access tokens. Again, don't worry about all this stuff. I know it is confusing, but we will see what they do as we continue with the course. So I will go at the top and I will include passport. So use passport. And I will call the routes for the passport. So passport routes. Of course, as you can imagine, this will add a couple of new routes in our application. Now, the last step is to go to the auth.php file and change the driver for the API from token to passport. Finally, I know that these were a lot of steps, but considering that you need to do them only once, then I guess it is fine. So in the end, you get all the good things that come with Vue and Laravel. So anyway, now let's use all the things that we installed and configured to generate tokens. So you might have noticed that we do not have any routes for authentication, right? Well, not exactly. We do have routes for authentication. If you remember, in the previous step, we called the passport routes, which means that if we run PHP, actually, let me clear this first which means that if we now run php artisan route list, it will list all the routes. And look at this. We have a couple of auth routes. Not a couple, I think there are a lot, but we do have many auth routes. However, for now, we need to concentrate to this route right here. So this route will be used to authenticate kinda to the system. So this will generate a token for us and we have to store it in our local storage and use it with the Vue application whenever we make an HTTP call. So now I will go to the Vue application and I will run to my terminal or in the side a new tab npm run dev. And I will go to the login page. Perfect. So I will bring my console and let's start. So we already have some users in the users table, so we can use those users to authenticate to the system. So we just have to change a bit the login component. Instead of get inside the login component, so we are using get. So now instead of get, we have to use post because remember, this route here, the auth token route that we are going to use is a post request. So change the get to post and the URL now is not API test anymore, but auth token. Let's also double check. Yep. For now, what I will do is to create the data that I will send to the server here. But later in the course, we will have a look to interceptors and you will see how much work they do for us, but all that later. So for now, let's do it here. So inside the test method, which now I will change to login and the button now is calling the login method, not the test method. So inside the login method now, I will create a variable var data. Go back to the database and open the auth clients table. So auth clients right here. We are using password grant. So the ID will be two because as you see here for the Laravel password grant client, the ID is two. So I will go back to this and I will say client ID two. The client secret, we also have a client secret. And the client secret, well, let's take a look. If I go back to this, this is our secret client. So get that and paste it. As I said, we are using grant type password. So I will say here grant underscore type is password. And all we have to do now is to pass the email and the password that we are using to log in. So remember, we are using two way binding. So for username, I can just say this dot email. And for password, well, this dot password because as I said we are using two-way binding and here we have email and password. 
So all we have to do now is to pass the data with our post request, so data. And as always, we log the response back to see the result. By the way, a new feature in ES6 are arrows. So instead of doing something like this, function, response, blah, 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 you can do something like this instead. So let me comment this out. And let me show you another way of doing this. So the other way is this one. Then response, and I will just use an arrow there. And of course, we can console log the response. So this one and this one, they are the same. However, this is the new way of doing it in the ES6 version, which is the latest version of JavaScript. And this is pretty much the old way we can say. But they still work in the same way. They have the same result. Nothing really changes. Of course, you can always go back to this whenever you feel like the new way of doing it is confusing. But from now on, this is how I will do it. Now, let's grab one of the emails and try to authenticate. So I will go to the users table. I will get this email and I will go here. So I will clear the console and the password for all of the users. Remember, it is secret. So I press login and it looks like this is not working. I have actually done this on purpose in the previous video. I want you to take a look at the service. So let me actually close all of them and I will open only the route service provider. So I want you to take a look at this map API routes here and also at the result that we have here, especially to this endpoint, the oath token endpoint that we are just using. So with all the data, with all the information that you have at front of you, can you guess why this is not working? So stop the video, take a moment, think about it, and then you can come back to this again. Okay, so the answer is that the auth token endpoint is not an API route. You can verify it here. So right here it says only throttle. However, we have this API test endpoint, right? And look at this. This has the API middleware. So our of token endpoint is not inside this map API routes. So even if we are using the course middleware here, it will not apply to this auth token. It will only apply to API test and API user, for example. So I will delete it from here and I will make this middleware global. So I will go to my kernel.php file inside the HTTP folder. And this is where you declare a middleware global. And this is our middleware, this one. Okay, so now let's try it again. I will go back to the browser. I will clear everything, press login, and look at this. We have the response without any errors, nothing. So we'll take a look inside the body object. And finally, we now have the access token. At this point, we have everything needed to make sure that the communication between Vue and Laravel works. And believe it or not, this is the hardest part, I think, that many developers have when they do something like this. When they connect, for example, Vue with Laravel or Angular with Laravel or, I don't know, React with Laravel, etc., etc. So this is one of the main problems that they have. They do not know exactly how to connect by using auth authentication. And here now you have the result. So this is working 100%. You get the access token, the refresh token, and anything else actually that you need in order to authenticate the system. Now in the next video, we will build our own authentication package. If you remember, we have installed view router and view resource. Because we installed view resource, for example, we have something like this dollar http available in the application so in the next video we will build something similar and you will love it i promise